It all begins with energy. In the modern world, we enjoy an abundance of energy resources unique in history. Energy that most of us simply take for granted. In the past 200 years, energy from fossil fuels, coal, natural gas, and particularly oil, have provided for an expansion of production and consumption that previous generations could never have dreamt of. We use fossil fuels to power our transportation, to heat and cool our homes, to grow and cook our food. Indeed, there is practically nothing that we do or make that doesn't require a significant expenditure of fossil fuel energy. But this age of human history may soon take a dramatic and startling turn, one for which most of us are completely unprepared. Because fossil fuels are non-renewable resources, and sooner or later they will begin to run low. Most people don't know it yet, but there is a strong possibility that worldwide oil production may have already peaked during this first decade of the 21st century. Within a decade or two, oil will become scarcer and much more expensive, and the impacts of that scarcity will be felt throughout every aspect of our lives. We human beings have been using energy forever, as long as we've been human. Mostly it's been in the form of food, either food that we ourselves ate or the food that we fed to animals so that we could harness their muscle power. We also used some energy in the form of mostly wood that we burned to heat our homes and, and so on. And that was about it until the Industrial Revolution when we found fossil fuels, these amazing substances, coal, oil, natural gas that had been produced from plant material. We have mechanized everything we possibly could over the last couple of hundred years, and that's the essence of the Industrial Revolution. Yes, it was about technology, inventing new tools that could do remarkable things, but we couldn't have done that if we didn't have the cheap fossil energy to power those tools. If you run out of gas in your car and have to push your car off to the side of the road, that's a lot of work. Imagine pushing your car 20, 30 miles. That's an enormous amount of work, and yet, you know, we do that with a gallon of gas for which we're paying two, two and a half bucks and complaining. We have to invest energy to get energy. And one of the amazing things about fossil fuels is the energy quality of fossil fuels. We, we had to invest very little in energy in terms of uh, exploration and production in order to get enormous returns of energy uh, from gasoline, diesel fuel, jet fuel, and so on. Uh, as time goes on, as we go to lower and lower quality resources, we have to invest more energy to get each increment of, of energy back from the process. More refining, uh, difficult exploration. We're drilling in thousands of feet of ocean water in many cases. It may cost you know, half a million dollars to drill a, a single test well these days. So uh, as energy return on energy invested declines, that means more and more of societal energy and investment capital has to go toward energy production and we have less and less energy to use for all the things that we want to use energy for. You know, we don't want to use energy just to explore for more energy. We want to use it to operate our cars and planes and, and economy. The way I describe peak oil is it's the point when the world's oil companies can no longer increase production. And in fact, it might stay at a plateau for a little while, the production, but then it's going to start to decline. However, the population of the Earth is still expanding and economies have this tendency to want to expand. Uh, so the demand is going to increase. And the difference between the demand and the consumption is where we're start going to start to see shortages and an increasing price of oil. Peak oil is just a discussion about uh, the inevitable moment when global oil supplies reach their maximum and begin to decline. We know this is going to happen because we've seen it happen in country after country. Probably most famously here in the U.S. The U.S. used to be the world's foremost oil producing country. 
1970, our oil production hit a maximum. It's been generally declining since then. And it's not because we haven't tried to keep increasing production. We've found whole huge new oil producing provinces in Alaska, the Gulf of Mexico. We've introduced new technology we've explored. But, you know, it's the low hanging fruit phenomenon. We found the best, cheapest, easy stuff first back in the 1920s and 30s. And we're still pumping a lot of that cheap, easy oil, but not nearly as much as we were back in the 50s and 60s and early 70s. Peak of oil discovery was in approximately 1963. And we have been... For the world? For the world. Uh, that's that year we found the most amount of oil. And every decade since, we've been finding less and less. So that right now, we're using between four and five barrels of oil uh, that we have previously discovered for every barrel that we're now discovering. We are basically using up the inheritance. Uh, we're going to see a decline in some of our major oil fields, perhaps Gowar oil field in Saudi Arabia and some of these large reserves, like we've seen in Prudhoe Bay, Cantrell oil field, North Sea, et cetera. So that, and as even the OPEC countries themselves have more demand, they're just not going to have enough oil to export to supply the thirst of the whole world when you include a lot of these up-and-coming third world nations like China and India. Um, and what's going to happen is that oil's not going to be unavailable, it's just going to be very expensive. And that economic ripple throughout everything is going to change our fundamental economy. One of the best pieces of evidence that we have that we're at the peak of oil is that between 2004 and 2008, despite month after month the world oil price hitting world records, the oil companies of the world could not, in fact, increase production. Uh, and they had every incentive to do so because the price was fabulous. They would have made even more money if they were able to. My best guess for future oil production is to use the prediction and the model by the Association for the Study of Peak Oil and Gas. And they predict a peak somewhere between 2010 and 2012. Now, with the financial crisis, members of that association are starting to say it's most likely actually happened already in 2008. So right now we're on the hump. We're just rolling over the peak. And we could stay at this level for maybe even a couple years, especially because the economy has contracted so hard. But as time goes on, the depletion of the giant and supergiant oil fields will accelerate. The oil producing countries are increasing their consumption over time as well. And they're doing that because they don't pay market rates for oil. And when these governments try to raise them, they experience riots and pushback from their people. So their internal consumption is growing dramatically. So as the producer countries keep more of the oil themselves and only sell to the world market whatever they're not using, we're going to have less and less oil available for us. So in five years' time, we could be experiencing a top-line decline of something like 4 or 5% per year, which is absolutely astonishing.